Hi, and welcome back to the biomechanics of the musculoskeletal system. I'm Dan Bassett, and in this unit we're going to be continuing our talk about biomechanics in the sports world. In the previous unit, we talked about quick ways that you can give feedback to the athlete you're working with. Obviously, there are a lot of tools in Visual 3D that can help you, but not all of them are the quickest to whip up on the spot. So we focused on some quick feedback that you can give when working with coaches, athletic trainers, or with the athlete himself. After you've collected the data, though, and you can get back to your office and calmly go through it, we'd advise to not use those quick calculations you performed on the field, but to do something a little bit more rigorous. Now, through Visual 3D Basics, Visual 3D Expert Builder, and this course, we've talked about a lot of scientifically sound methods to obtain your uh, calculated data. And they apply to sports performance as well. One of the big differences that you run into though with sports performance is tracking can be a little bit more complex. This isn't due to camera systems as the current technology, especially in the top end systems, is fantastic. And you're probably not facing issues due to the technology. You're facing issues due to the motion. In the previous unit and in this unit as well, we used a squat jump as an example. The anterior iliac uh, spine markers disappear uh, in almost all cases. Of course, there are some other methods that we could use to not have to rely on those markers or not use those markers at all, use a different type of marker set but that's beyond the point of what we're trying to do here. We're trying to help you reason through ways that you can overcome these obstacles. Obviously, if you could just place a cluster on the sacrum and not rely on the anterior markers, that is probably a valid solution. But you might not always realize that this is going to be an issue until after you've already recorded the data. So, we're going to look at a few things like this and uh, some ways, even for example, jump height that we talked about in the previous unit, a quick way to get that from your marker data, but you might want a more robust calculation. So we're gonna talk about that as well in this unit.